Steel Path is right around the corner, and a lot of us are speculating different things about this new upcoming update, hard mode means we will hopefully see a challenge in the game, and we could finally use some of our high level builds and setups frequently, the most frequent topic that is being associated with hard mode is what will be the new meta, because honestly, we can't deny that there will be specific builds and synergy which will be more useful in this new game mode. Others would say that damage buffing frames like Rhino and Chroma will be put to good use in this hard mode missions, while other players are expecting that the armor stripping meta will be revived once the steel path goes live, but honestly, those are situational scenarios. I'm not saying that these types of meta will be inadequate for hard mode missions but, just take for example armor stripping, it will only be good against grinier factions, but it will not be necessary for all situations. I will cover lots of new synergies for the upcoming hard mode but for now, let's focus on a specific frame, and that is Baruk. I know what you are thinking, but squad leader, this frame's restraint bar is horrible and I can't even make his fourth ability work. Well, that depends on your build. I will give you the knowledge you need later, so sit back, relax, and just enjoy the video. Update after update, Baruch seems to become stronger. The melee rework was just the start, handing this frame the ability to reach a million damage with a heavy attack build. Then, there comes his new reactive storm augment, which made his fourth ability transcend from mediocre to one of the best exalted melee abilities in the game. In fact, Reactive Stormbrook is very lethal when hard mode comes, you all know that his fourth ability can reach insane amount of critical stats, and when you pair this with the Reactive Storm Augment which gives out a huge amount of status chance, you can ensure that your Brook will be a murder machine in the Steel Path update, but the status chance buff is not the only thing that makes this build variation special, its feature wherein it alters Brook's desert wind damage type to match enemy weakness makes it a very versatile ability against almost all factions. Now there are rumors that if you put primed heavy trauma on your build, that will buff the converted damage. This is not true. The impact damage from the ability will be the one converted to match enemy weakness once you equipped reactive storm but, this doesn't mean that adding any impact damage mods will give you more damage. You are best with damage and elemental damage mods if you want more firepower for this ability. Also, don't expect that Xorus will be there to aid Baruch in destroying hard mode enemies. The best stat stick just left the building, as digital extremes will give it a big nerf in the steel path update. If you haven't seen how mad the damage of a max combo counter Xorus, paired with a reactive storm brook, then just witness it on the background. The red crits are so good and lethal, that it will massacre a crowd of high level armored enemies with just a few hits. I agree that Xorus is overkill for brook. But it makes no sense for me to remove the interaction of this weapon to other frames, namely, Ash, Atlas, and Korra. Baruch wasn't intended to do such feat, but the developer did allow these three frames to fully benefit from a max combo counter. In fact, this is always the case for years and I don't understand why they are removing this interaction with this weapon. In addition, if you take a look almost all melee exalted weapons, they are pretty weak against normal melee weapons. Xorus was the only way so that exalted melees could somehow cope up with the damage gap against normal melee weapons. And this nerf would just lead back to making exalted melee not good again, unless they will allow acolyte mods to work with exalted melee weapons that is. This is just my two cents regarding these future changes, and I hope that Digital Extremes reconsider removing Xorus interaction with exalted melee weapons. But just like I've said, this doesn't mean anything to Baruch, with or without Xorus, this frame can still dismantle high level enemies easily with the right build, a max power strength Baruch will not only have enough damage, but also survive ability to withstand any enemies he faces, with this build, he will gain an insane 810% bonus status chance accompanied with a 40% damage reduction while this ability is active, but that's not all. Desolate hands will be very effective also in mitigation damage, remember that each dagger will give you a 10% damage reduction, and it will only require you to have at least 9 always active to get the 90% damage reduction cap. Aside from damage mitigation, this ability is also your secondary method to erode Baruch's restraint counter, it would be advisable to equip stretch and give this ability enough range to seek out targets. 
8.7 meters radius is enough to not consume all daggers, and help you out erode your restraint bar. But when it comes to the best option, lull is the ability you need to, to get rid of your restraint fast. This build will give 36 meters radius to this ability which is sufficient enough to affect a crowd of enemies. A word of advice, it's best that you have minimal duration, so you can spam this ability and make it effective. The lesser the duration, the faster you can erode your restraint bar with this ability. For the Desert Wind build, I usually use a mix of critical and elemental mods. It would also be viable to pick dual status chance if are short in former, but I highly suggest going for elemental mods. The status chance boost you have from reactive storm is enough and I think you should focus more on ramping up the elemental damage of your Desert Wind. For the element damage type, I always go with corrosive and heat against armored enemies, but you can also go with viral and heat if you wish to. These three mods over here will change depending on the faction you are facing. Now I was running a heavy attack build in the past, and you can also replicate it by removing these two mods, and replacing it with killing blow and corrupt charge. However, I rarely use heavy attacks with this frame now since the wave coming from his fists will completely melt the enemies in second. I do use heavy attack but it's pretty rare right now as I find air bending much efficient because of the tactical advantage it gives, it's way safer, and it deals a lot of damage. Again, reactive storm brook is not the only meta that you should use in the new hard mode. I will be sharing more synergies soon that will give you an easy time completing all the missions in the steel path update, so. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell to keep updated with our latest videos. Also, please like and follow our official Facebook page. I'm quite active in that platform posting memes and stuff about Warframe and gaming in general. Lastly, you can follow me on Twitter if you want, and get some latest updates on what I'm currently working, or thoughts about Warframe in general. Thank you so much for watching, Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.